Hey guys, so today we're doing something very exciting. I am at the Northeast Regional Library of my town. They're having a book sale today where they're selling, I guess, overstock or books that they're getting rid of. It lasts all weekend long. By the end of the weekend, they pretty much get rid of everything. I'm here on Friday because I want to make sure that I get to see everything that they have. I continuously hear about this library sale that happens throughout the year, and I always seem to miss them. And so this time I heard someone talking about it last week and I wrote it down in my planner to make sure that I could be here. I'm actually meeting my friend Angela. Today we're hoping to find some cool stuff. So let's go inside. pretty big book sale. I was actually very surprised. I don't know why it's a it's a big library, but in my mind I was just thinking that the actual book sale wouldn't be that big, but they had multiple rooms that were filled to the brim with books. Surprisingly, they also had multiple copies of different things. I have 11 books to show you guys. Let's just get into it right now. The first book is a Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. This actually won the Man Booker a couple of years ago. And I've had my eye on this one for a while. That's the case with a lot of these. Actually, these are all pretty much books that I've almost purchased with my own money at full price at the bookstore. I'm glad that I waited and found this somewhere else. I actually always thought that this was supposed to be a nonfiction book. I never really read the plot summary too deeply. Uh, but it looks like this is actually a fictional retelling. Talking about the seven gunmen that attacked Bob Marley's house in 1976. And I think it's going to be talking a lot about race and um, all of the events going on during that time. So I'm excited to finally have this one in my collection. The next book I have is The Sellout by Paul Beatty. This is, again, one that I've looked at multiple times in the bookstore, but decided not to pick up. Um, the main reason for that is I'm a little unsure if I'm going to like the writing style. I think this is told from the perspective of a black man who doesn't want to be black. I'm not too sure. I know that this is supposed to be sarcastic and um, sort of like a parody, but I'm sure it's also saying some really true and real things about society. So I'm not sure when I'm going to grab this one. I'll definitely have to be in the mood for the writing style. I'm glad that I finally own it. The next book I have is from an author that I have heard of before, but I've actually never read. It is The Paying Guest by Sarah Waters. I've heard a lot about Sarah Waters and that her writing is very entertaining. Um, she wrote The Little Stranger, which I've heard a lot about. I actually don't know too much about this one. This takes place in London in 1922. From what I can tell, this is going to be a historical fiction following a mother and her daughter as they take in a couple of tenants. And I guess it's just the experiences that they have with them. I'm really excited to own this one. Unfortunately, this one had one of those bargain price stickers on it, so I'll have to try and get that off sometime. But definitely still very good quality, and I'm glad to have something by Sarah Waters in my collection. Hopefully, I'll like her writing, and then I can pick up uh, The Little Stranger. Next, we have one that I'm very excited about. It is Homegoing by Yagyasi. I'm sure I said that wrong. Um, my apologies. 
This takes place in Ghana and it follows two half-sisters as they're sold into slavery. I think this is going to be a multi-generational novel. I think it's going to talk a lot about slavery and home and all of those things. So I'm really excited to have this one. Love what they did with the paperback. I still think that the hardback is prettier. This is going to be a really good one. Last year this had a big rave and um, ta Coates actually blurbed it. Hopefully we'll be getting to it sometime this year. Next we have The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I also own Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. I have not read either of these yet. I've only heard pretty much good things about this one. I think it follows a cast of actors and it kind of slips into this evil plot line. It's like this is a book that's best to go into not knowing too much. So I'll probably will read this before I read The Goldfinch. The next book I have is The Stranger in the Woods by Michael Finkel. This one is actually a March 2017 book of the month pick. It is a nonfiction and I think it follows our author Finkel who kind of chronicles the life of the last true hermit and kind of his reasons for leaving and what he's learned since he's been gone and that sort of thing. I'm excited to read this one pretty soon because it's not too long um, and it's a nonfiction. The next book I've been unsure about for a while, it is The Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver. I know Barbara Kingsolver is well regarded and a lot of people love this book. It follows a family of Baptist missionaries in the Congo in 1959. I'm not really sure how this book is going to deal with religion. I wouldn't necessarily consider myself a super religious person. So I've been a little apprehensive to pick this one up. Recently a few people I love have said that they've read this and really enjoyed it. So I saw it and I definitely had to pick it up. I'm glad to have it in my collection. We're getting close to the end. Next book I have to show you guys is Half Broke Horses by Jeanette Walls. She wrote The Glass Castle, which was turned into a movie last year. If you read the book, I think this is another memoir that follows the life of her grandmother and her childhood and kind of a little bit more of the backstory behind her family. One of the other cool things I like about getting used books is people usually tend to leave little slips of paper, bookmarks, things like that in here. And someone actually left the gift receipt still taped to the back of this. Uh, this was actually purchased as a Christmas gift, I'm assuming, in December of 2013 in Liverpool, New York. Uh, so that's cool. It's just interesting to see kind of the life of a book. I guess you never really think about how many places it's been before you. The next book I have to show you is Days Without End by Sebastian Barry. Uh, this won the Costa Award a couple of years ago, and I heard a lot of people rave about this one. Uh, this follows Thomas McNulty, who has just fled the Great Famine in Ireland in the 1850s, and he gets involved in the Indian Wars and eventually the Civil War. And from what I've heard, I think this has gay characters. I think Thomas might be bisexual or gay. I'm excited to see if this has the LGBT themes in it that I'm thinking that it will. Hopefully I'll enjoy this one, but I'm glad to finally have it. Next, we have another book from an author I've already read. It is Mohsen Hamid's The Reluctant Fundamentalist. I think this is his first book. I read his book, Exit West. It came out in 2017. This one follows a Pakistani man in Lahore who is speaking with an American stranger. And I guess it's talking about immigration and dreams and kind of the opportunities that are or aren't given to you depending on where you grew up and the environment you live in. Mohsen Hamid's writing is always really smart. I'll be getting around to this one this year. And the last book I have to show you all is probably the one I'm the most excited about. It is a book that I have put in my cart multiple times online to purchase. For some reason I haven't bit the bullet yet, but I finally found it at this used book sale. It is Autumn by Ali Smith. This is the first part in a seasonal quartet, which I always thought was a cool idea. So the first one is Autumn then winter, then spring, both of which I think she's already published. I think summer is the last one to come out. The whole purpose of this is to really depict the atmosphere of autumn, um, the feelings that that season brings, and I definitely think it's going to be meditative. Ali Smith wrote How to Be Both, which is also really popular and one that I've been looking out for on the shelves of my used bookstores. I'm so glad to have this one in my hands. And with that, we are finished. The box is empty. I have to say again, I was very surprised with the selection that they had. I did not think that I was gonna go home with as many books as I did. Glad to finally add all of these to my collection and to have them on my bookshelves to pick up whenever I'm in the mood. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, go back and watch some of my older videos and subscribe. But until then, I'll see you guys later.